ons is boere, ons Afrikaner, ons is bezig om uitgemoord te word hier so. Please spread the word. Crimes like this happen partly because there's evil and wickedness out there, but also partly because good people say nothing, do nothing, they ignore it. If you ignore this, if you don't help spread the word, you are in a tiny way complicit with these horrors. Please don't be. Stand up. This isn't about our nation, but this is about people very much like us, and it's about the principle that all peoples of all colours all over the world have a right to safety and security in their own homeland. When we look into the eyes of little Wilhelmine Potgieter, you saw nothing but love and joy of life. Wilhelmine was an Afrikaner toddler, a white child of the Afrikaner people of South Africa. The brightness of her eyes and her heart-stealing smile told it all. Wilhelmine loved life, but she did not even make her third birthday. On the 1st of December of the year 2010, the farm where Wilhelmine and her parents were living was attacked by criminals. Wilhelmine's father came first. He was butchered to death. Then Wilhelmine's mother was murdered. Wilhelmine was next in line. The innocent and lovingly red-haired toddler did not have a chance. She was mercilessly killed, execution style. Since the transition to a black majority government in 1994 in South Africa, some 3,000 plus farm killings have been committed. White Afrikaner farmers, often with their families, have been killed, mutilated and raped. Hand in hand with his granddaughter Clarice, who is an Afrikaner girl herself, Fritz walked to the monument of Potgietersres in the north of South Africa, in the province of Limpopo. This monument has been raised to memorize the victims of farm murders across South Africa. When arriving at the monument, Fritz explained to Clarice why he and Clarice were bringing flowers and what the monument was about. Clarice, luister alsjeblieft. Ons het saam saam toegeloop. Je weet ons voor hier die kruisen. Ons is boeren, ons is Afrikaners. Hier die kruisen is opgericht voor al die boeren, al die Afrikaners, wat vermoord is op hulle plaatsen. Je ziet, daar is bijen van hulle. Slechte mensen het gekom en voor hulle dood gemaakt. Hier die mensen wat hier leeg is eindelijk ons broers, ons zussies, ons paas en ons maas. Ons is lief voor die boeren en dit is hoe kom ons breng voor hier die bloemetjes. Ons geloof, die Afrikaners moet een eigen land heen waar hulle veilig kan leven. Kom, ons leveren die bloemetjes bij die kruisie van lief, Willemien Potgieter. Looking for a solution for the Afrikaners, Fritz drove to the Cape province. The Cape province is a southern province of South Africa. Afrikaners have established a town there called Orania. During the 80s and the 90s of the last century, the whole world joined the struggle of Nelson Mandela. The more so since Mandela's cause seemed to be righteous and Mandela showed himself to be a man of forgiveness. A combination rarely seen in our world. Politics and forgiveness. We all know the result. Mandela's time and again plaque painted opponents, the Afrikaners of South Africa, who were said to have invented apartheid and who had therefore become a worldwide token of utter disgust, were finally defeated. And thus the transition to an almost wholly black government became reality. The current rulers, the black government, vows for democracy and justice for all. The whole world can rejoice. Twenty years of black majority rule have passed. How has this government executed its tasks? The picture that comes out, at least with regard to the white Afrikaner population in South Africa, bothered Fritz. 
Their situation looks bleak. The current government discriminates against Afrikaans, the language of the Afrikaner, and also the mother tongue of millions of colored people in South Africa. Education centers such as the Afrikaner universities are forced to abandon their Afrikaans teaching programs and must adapt English as the medium instead. Students of Afrikaner descent are discouraged against enrolling for university studies. Since the transition of government in 1994, the employment of Afrikaners has plummeted. Tens of thousands of Afrikaner people, if not more, lost within a matter of days their income and jobs and has been brought down to a level of begging almost. A current and prominent politic leader within the ANC publicly called for the attack and rape of Afrikaners. Adding to this bleak situation, the Afrikaner community is besieged by far murders. They are notorious for their cruelty. Fritz took the view that it is good that the majority of government wants to rule the land, but if this government does not execute the duties that comes with that, such as caring for all the different people within South Africa, then these different people have the right to care for themselves. The Cape province is the southern province of South Africa. Afrikaners have established a town there called Orania. The town of Orania is ruled on the grounds of the following guidelines. First, if the Afrikaners are serious about their survival, they must start from scratch. Afrikaners have been stripped almost completely of their previous benefits, and perhaps for the good. Afrikaners must break with their past and look for a new future. There cannot be such a thing of re-establishing a kind of apartheid. Second, during the apartheid era, black people worked as servants for the white Afrikaner. The relationship white versus black or master versus servant has brought harm to both parties. Afrikaners must back out from this and do the dirty work with their own hands. And thirdly, Afrikaners must have their own land where they can know they are safe, where they can rule themselves. In Orania there is no wealth and not every endeavor results in a success. Moreover, everything one sees within this community is on a small scale, but the little town is flourishing and undoubtedly moving forward due to the energetic willingness of its leaders to build a new future. Among other things, Orania introduced their own ecological politics, their own educational system for its youth, their own currency and several economical projects. Orania also functions as a kind of safe haven for all Afrikaners that are traumatized by violence, victimized by racism, suffering from poverty or anti-Afrikaner politics. Executed by this or that random politician within South Africa. These so called fugitives are welcomed in Orania on the condition that they are willing to submit to a program of re employment. Fritz feels that, as many people do, also the Afrikaners must be allowed to cling to their language, tradition, and cultures to reach out to their survival as a people and to strive for a life in happiness. This is not wrong. That cannot be held back for them. Attempting to do so would be an injustice. However, the whole project of Urania only makes sense if the Afrikaners back off from nationalism and racism. What is the use of any nation building when the people involved are prone to live a nasty and selfish life? As Christians and followers of Jesus Christ, we seek to live a humble life, attempting to serve each other, and so we reach out to our neighbors, regardless of their race or descent. Fritz feels that this is essential for the Afrikaners, their future, and for the Orania community. What that means is that people might simply turn up in Urania.
They might simply with a little bag over the shoulder and in some cases with two or three children at their knee, simply walk here or take a train here mm -hmm. or uh, uh, get a lift, hitchhike here. Uh, and we are confronted with the reality of people on our doorstep without any income, without any place to stay. And what we do amongst others with this money is to accommodate people for at least the first week or two to try and give them the opportunity to get to learn uh, the ways in Urania, the fact that we work ourselves, that we are creating a, a own future in our own community. And if they are happy with that, and if they are willing to fall in under our own uh, rules uh, and ways of life, then we try and find a job for them. And we are really trying our best to create accommodation for them. At the moment, we have uh, single quarters for men called Elam. And we are at the moment now roughly roof height with uh, single quarters for women, which we will be calling the Narina project. Which means that all single people who need accommodation can get subsidized uh, housing. And in the case of married couples, we also have four or five units where we can house them temporarily. Not uh, in luxury, but at least we give them the opportunity to uh, find their feet. And uh, a lot of them have stayed here for five or six years, have even married here, uh, have developed decent lives in our community. A lot of them obviously are not very interested in work and we find that these people leave again within two or three days. Um, Afrikaners are under a lot of pressure at the moment in South Africa. We are discriminated against. Uh, we look at culture, at Afrikaners as a cultural group. Now the reality is that most Afrikaners are white and that's just the reality, but we don't work with race. Uh, we're not opposing anyone. We're not viewing ourselves superior to anyone else. We're not saying that uh, for Afrikaners to have a future in South Africa, there's no future for other groups. We say just that Afrikaners also have a right to have a future in South Africa. And what we are trying to do in Urania is to exactly ensure that Afrikaners in a very small part of South Africa will have a future, will have a place where we can have our own schools, our own municipality, mm -hmm. our own churches, our own cultural institutions, so that Afrikaners can have a place, a place where they can call home. We want Urania to be established as the cultural home of Afrikaners. What is important to us in Urania um, is to develop our own education system and our own, in our own schools. And in that sense, Urania is becoming a place of uh, Afrikaner education of excellence at this stage on, on school level, but we also want to, to start doing tertiary education sometime or the other. When we came here in 1991, when we got and, and bought this town, there was no economy here. Uh, nothing. There was absolutely no economy, not even one shop. What is important to understand about the economy of Urania is that Urania don't get any support. Uh, now, we built up, we've built up Urania with our own labor, our own capital, our own initiatives. No one else did it for us, despite the fact that we still pay taxes to the South African government. And if we just look at the past then, in what happened in 20 years, in 1991, uh, this town, what was left of, of this town, was bought for 1,6 million rand, South African rand. Uh, today, it's worth more than 400 uh, million rand. Uh, what we're doing here is, is, is to create an economic future for Afrikaners also. Other parts of our economy uh, is things like agriculture, which plays a very important role, tourism. Uh, we are developing that to a sense where we will soon have our own uh, um, airport in Urania. Uh, we've, we focus very strongly on services and, and the production of products so that we can export products. And there's already products in Urania that are exported to the rest of South Africa, but also the rest of the world. As far as the African people are concerned, I pray to God that God grants them their own place, their own land, if you wish, where they can live safely, where they can rule themselves, where they can be a righteous people, loving and lovingly, as God wants his human beings to be, where they can prosper and blossom. Hello, <laughs> 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 <laughs>